Yes! Welcome to another Daily Devotion. I'm your host, once again, El Padre. Welcome, welcome. Today we are in Revelation chapter 6 on this bright and early Tuesday morn. Uh, maybe it's Tuesday night wherever you are, I don't know. Who knows when you're watching this thing. Hey David, wanted to say hi. Throw that out there for you. Welcome, Mom. It's nice to see you again. Thank you guys for being so faithful to these videos. Bryce and Faith and Glenn. Man, it's so good that you guys are keeping up. Guess what? Uh, starting in January, for those of you who are new here, we're going to be starting a new plan. And we're going to be going through the, the whole New Testament over the course of a year. So that's exciting for me because uh, I think that there are times when, especially in, in the, the last two years where uh, some of us, it feels like the, the reading is too much. Uh, some of us, it doesn't bother us at all because we're used to, to doing more than that. And so, um, but we wanted to make it uh, next year at least easier for those who are new to the faith, who are growing in the Lord who can't or aren't to a place yet to where they can keep up with seven days a week, three or four chapters, sometimes one. But starting in January, we're going to be doing uh, just the, the Bible through the whole year. Uh, sorry, the, the whole New Testament through the whole year. Meaning we'll be around 21 or so verses a day. Uh, it'll be broken up a little bit differently, but I'm, I'm super excited about that. Uh, so please... Make the commitment now to join us starting in January to go through the whole New Testament uh, with us through 2022. Uh, I, I guarantee that if you can teach yourself to get into the habit of being intentional, spending time with Jesus and his word, I guarantee it will change your life. I'm so excited um, because especially when you ask him to speak to you, right? Like, he will. Uh, it's going to be exciting. So today, um, without further ado, let's jump in to Revelation chapter 6. If you haven't read it yet, please go ahead, go to the Bible, pause the video, read it all, uh, and then come back. Chapter 6 is a taking on... Uh, it's extent, not taking on. It is continuing. There we go. Uh, uh, I see you there making fun of me. Continuing uh, with what takes place in chapter 5. In chapter 5, we see how the video that Dan talked about, uh, where he talks about the scroll. Uh, and, and there's this big concern in heaven because there's nobody worthy to open the scroll. And then... Bam! There's the Lamb. The Lamb is worthy to open the scroll. And the Lamb, who is Jesus, uh, he starts to open the scroll starting in verse 1. So, Revelation chapter 6, verse 1. Then I saw the Lamb, also known as Jesus, open one of the seven seals. And I heard one of the four living creatures say, with a voice like thunder, Come! I looked, and there was a white horse. Its rider held a bow. A crown was given to him. And he went out as a conqueror in order to conquer. So, I don't know if, if you need anything like this, but sometimes a timeline is helpful. Uh, and so, what we're going to do here is just say that, like, at the resurrection of Jesus, uh, or we could say the ascension, when he goes into heaven, happens here. And then it's the birth of what is called the church age. That's what they call it. Uh, and so at some point in time, there is going to be what is called the tribulation. This is for the whole world. This is when the Antichrist uh, is going to be here. Even though there's a lot of Antichrist, this is... A guy that's gonna kind of like try to rule the world, so to speak. We're gonna get into those details later. But then this this is a seven year period. But what's interesting is the last three and a half 
It's called the Great Tribulation. Why? Because it gets really, really crazy bad. Uh, and so then after that, you have uh, the Millennial Reign. This is the, the second coming then. The second coming of Jesus. Uh, millennial Reign. And then there's more stuff that we're going to talk about soon. Uh, but for now, today's chapter, chapter 6, is sort of the beginning of this section here. So we're going to zoom in on the tribulation. And there's a great debate. There's, uh, you know, the question is this. Is these scrolls, the, the way that they're being opened, is this um, in, in terms of timeline? So like... Today, he's opening scroll number one. Tomorrow, he's opening scroll number two. And there's like this order of events. Or, because it's one scroll, right? Um, is it all kind of taking place at the same time? Those are two different ways to kind of look at it. You're welcome to look at it however you want. But either way, we should know what's going on. So here we go. Uh, when you see one of the four creatures says the word come, some of yours might say something a little different, but what he's kind of trying to say is uh, come, but it could also mean go, um, in the sense that what, what the, the living creature is saying is like, let's go, uh, come on, I'm, or he's releasing the horse and rider. If that makes sense. He's not just saying like, hey, come hang out with me. He's saying, come, if that makes sense. Uh, so here we go. Uh, zooming in on the tribulation. Uh, number one, the first horse and rider is a white horse. And what does it say? It's rider held a bow. And he went out as a conqueror to conquer. So he's going out to conquer. So a lot of people believe that this is in particular to uh, referring to the Antichrist. Um, so number two, the next one, verse three, when he opened the second seal, I heard the second leaving creature say, come or be released. Something like that, right? Then another horse went out, a fiery red one. So this one is red, fiery red horse. And the rider is allowed to take peace from the earth. Now, this is part of why I actually think that uh, there's reasonable... Uh, it, it, it wouldn't be unreasonable, I guess, to believe that all of these are kind of being released sort of like at the same time, if that makes sense. So like, uh, if you think about it when you're, I don't know, like when the basketball team is getting together in the huddle and then they're like, okay, uh, so-and-so, number blah, 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 come on, and, you know, and then they go out and the thing, and then the next guy goes out, and then the next guy goes out, but it's all technically, like, it's all in the same time at the same time right like it's like the same day for the same game it's happening they play together like that it could be like that um this guy is going to take peace um one of the things then it says then he's going to so that people would slaughter one another a large sword was given to him so this dude the fiery red horse dude is creating this chaos within the earth. It reminds me a lot of what took place last year, but on steroids. Like, like the craziness that happened last year with the riots, with the unrest, the civil unrest, just way, way more out of hand. Um, way more out of hand. Brother, neighbors are killing each other, um, all that kind of stuff. Number three. Uh, verse 5, when he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come, or get out of here. And I looked, and there was a black horse. This is my favorite horse because it's black. It's my favorite color. That, that's a joke. Just call him that. And I looked, and there was a black horse. Its rider held a set of scales in his hand, 
Then I heard something like a voice among the four living creatures say, a quart of wheat for a denarius and three quarts of barley for a denarius, but do not harm the oil and the wine. Uh, so this is, he's got a scale in his hand. <clears throat> and then what he, it, what he gets to cause is um, economic collapse is probably the best way to say it. Like things that normally... Um, it, it, it's just they're going to be so far out of balance. But what it'll do is cause economic craziness. Um, this is where having a larger vocabulary would actually be super handy. Okay, number four. Verse seven, when he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, Come, and I looked, and there was a pale green horse. So this one is pale green. It is an ugly horse. And its rider is named Death. And Hades was following him. He probably was on like a little wagon. <laughs> and they were given authority over a fourth of the earth to kill by sword, famine, plague, and wild animals. So <clears throat> think about it like this. Um, if, like, for example, this is, this is not me saying this, okay? Keep in mind. This is me using this as an example. Like, maybe last year... Uh, we could have said that you could actually see a legitimate um, each and every one of these things taking place within the country in a lot of different things. So like last year, right, we had a sore. Uh, there was a lot of um, civil unrest all throughout the country where uh, like citizens were killing each other, right? Uh, think about what took place in places like Seattle, right? Where they had uh, that uh, autonomous zone where there wasn't allowed to be any police and stuff like that. Um, think about, um, not only that, think about like when some of the, the different capital buildings throughout the country were being literally overtaken by its citizens. Um, stuff like that, that's what this is talking about. Um, famine. Um, you know, we didn't necessarily experience it um, in, in a real crazy sense, but remember when like you would like even now if you go to the store It's not uncommon to go to Kroger and for there to be entire shelves that are totally empty um, That's a small sign of famine um, Plague, uh, right? Hey uh, Corona anybody uh, Wild animals now think about this um, something that we don't experience a whole lot here because in all reality, uh, people have done a fairly decent job of taking dominion, uh, you know. And so, um, by and large, if you go outside, you might get attacked by mosquitoes, uh, maybe other bugs, I don't know. But, but like, birds don't just see you and attack you. Um, but in this particular instance, there's actually a decent chance that the Lord has given permission to the death rider guy on the black, pale green horse, not black horse, to say to, that, that they would have permission to, to tell these animals that they can just attack you. Think about it like this. You walk out of your home and a coyote runs up and just bites your leg, attacks you. That's the kind of thing that this is this is talking about. Maybe you live in, in, in the West and, and a cougar just jumps out of nowhere and attacks you. Uh, they normally don't do that. Every once in a while you hear signs of a wild animal attacking somebody, but just think about it on a mass global scale. Now, these are the first four. They call these the four horsemen of the apocalypse. How much time do we got? Uh, let's see. Do we have time to finish? Yeah, let's just do it. I'll sum them up. Uh, the fifth seal is basically people praying to the Lord. And they're saying, uh, like, Jesus, when are you going to take vengeance for our blood? These are people who have been martyred. And Jesus basically says, look, uh, there are still more to come. Uh, now, depending on how you interpret this, uh, depends on whether or not you use this as a way to say, uh, for some, for example, uh, the rapture is not something that anybody really knows if it takes place at the beginning, the middle, or the end. 
This is an argument that some people use to say that it could either be here or here. Uh, that the full measure of, of murders hasn't happened yet. Um, and he's waiting to take to avenge that blood. Uh, the, the, when he avenges it is when he comes down. Does that make sense? So uh, some people would say that because these are all kind of happening at the same time, that maybe this is actually being said here at the same time it's being released. You know, it, it's released, but it hasn't like officially like started happening. They're, you know, the, the beasts are like, yeah, go get out of here. And before they actually start doing anything on the earth, the, the, the martyrs are like, Jesus, what? you know, maybe, I don't know. Uh, and that would be the explanation for people over here. Uh, then uh, the sixth seal, he says this, uh, A violent earthquake occurred, the sun turned black like sackcloth made of hair, the entire moon became like blood, the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree drops with unripe figs, when shaken by a high wind. The sky was split apart like a scroll being rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved from its place, and the kings of the earth, the nobles and the generals, rich, the powerful, and every slave, every free person hid in caves among the rocks of the mountains. And they said to the mountains and to the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of the one seated on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb, because the great day of their wrath has come. Who is able to stand? Now, this is also, um, sometimes people use this as a way to say, like this is an example of the rapture. Like when he does this, the, the clouds scroll, Jesus' face is there. Either way, what we know for sure is that uh, there is going to come a time when the, the sky is going to part and Jesus' face will be shining down and people are going to hide in caves. And they're going to say, save us from the wrath of the Lamb. Now, let me tell you this. Um, I, I know that that's a lot. Uh, there, there's buckets more of depth that we could do with this particular passage. Uh, but because this is a Devo and we wanted to just bless you with it, I, I don't want this. Please don't allow this to become something that instills fear. If you believe in Jesus, this is an exciting passage. Even if you have to live through the tribulation because you have hope. Uh, when we know that these things are taking place, we know that Jesus is going to come. The, the day of wrath will come. For believers, that's not a sad day. That's a good day. That means the martyr's blood will be avenged. And some of us, uh, we may have the privilege of being a martyr. Um, that's a blessing. Uh, let me just take a moment. Let's pray. Let's close here. Um, if you can't tell, I'm losing my voice. Um, so let's pray. Jesus, we come before you. Lord, we humbly just say, uh, Lord, some of this is really hard to, to understand. Lord, uh, we just pray that your will will be done. Lord, we pray, come Jesus, come quickly. Lord, uh, and we also just say, Lord, if there's anything in our lives we need to repent of, Lord, that you would prepare our hearts so that when you do come, we'll be ready. In Jesus' name, amen. Alrighty, if you haven't done so already, please hit the little subscribe button, click the little bell, uh, and you will be notified whenever a fun one of our videos comes out. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, hopefully we'll see you tomorrow live. Uh, Wednesday night. <laughs> Peace out, Girl Scout.